<laughs> this is something for those who want to save your age and start working or go to masters. Since I kind of live in a society where age matters and the faster the better they said. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Oh, it's rain here. Konnichiwa rain this. Last time, the first time I made a podcast on how I went to Japan, how I got into Japan. I vaguely touch upon what I prepared to apply to a Japanese university and it can be applicable to some people and for those who are not going to Japan as well and I gave you some tips from a third world country perspective I'm sorry if that podcast is a bit weird because I didn't kind of script it up but now I learned I had to script every single thing but I want to say haha so let me summarize everything before it got before I get into the topic so what I wanted to say in the last podcast one prepare English test whether it's IELTS or TOEFL I took IELTS so I can't talk much about TOEFL your IELTS score should be 7.0 overall that's for undergraduate but if you go to masters probably you might need higher each band no less than 6.0 also paper SAT since some departments require it also to broaden your choices and give higher chance for you to get accepted to your dream university or major second research about your university go to educational or university fairs get some information from representatives of your dream universities and third start your preparation early the earlier the better especially those who are applying to to art school that require portfolios, videos, or any demos depending on your major. For others, get those language and art certifications, participate in organizations if you can, that contributes a lot to your acceptance, consideration, or maybe scholarship chance. Now let's get into the main topic. You might be wondering, you don't need Japanese to enter a Japanese university. How does it work? That's that doesn't make any sense. I'll tell you the story how I did it. I enrolled into an English-based program, meaning I don't really need Japanese at all. Well, it depends on from the school though. As I heard from some people, some require at least JLPT and for like Shizuoka University. For those who don't know what's JLPT, it stands for Japanese Language Proficiency Test. And one being the hardest, well, and five being the easiest. My school's program didn't require me to speak Japanese at all when I enroll. However, I have to get credits from Japanese language classes in order for me to graduate. How it worked back in my day was students had to do a Japanese test and the result comes out instantly. If your result is level 1 to 5, you need to take 24 credits. If your result is level 6, you need to take 12 Level 7 and 8 are exempted from taking Japanese classes. You can retake the test again in the upcoming semester to reduce or exempt you completely from taking Japanese classes. My result was level 3 back then but and by now I already fulfilled my Japanese classes credit to graduate. The pro of this kind of route is you can save time learning Japanese and graduating from a univer- Japanese university in 4 years or 3.5 years if you're super duper smart and you fulfilled certain criterias. My university has a Japanese language school as well and the credits I get count for my required credits to graduate. I took 5 out of 6 levels for Jap- general Japanese classes as they gave me the most credits. I took some one credit courses just to boost up certain areas like speaking, Japanese related, etc. and to fulfill my elective credits. Meaning I took more than 24 credits. On the contrary, I found that my Japanese skills ended up being not on par as people who went through a Japanese language school route and enter a Japanese university whether it's a Japanese program or English program. Since I have to balance between my major's program and Japanese language classes and the language classes aren't as intense as Japanese language ones, meaning you don't study Japanese, just Japanese all day, you will feel the difference in one point. It depends from each person, but I took quite difficult courses for my major, therefore it's hard to concentrate studying Japanese. 
Some of my friends actually ended up having real proficient Japanese after graduation, but some might not. I heard from a senior of mine that quite a number of students went through went to a Japanese language school classes in the morning and go to my department's classes in the afternoon. Again, it depends on each person's ability, how they manage to ba balance their major studies in English and Japanese all at the same time. I did try to supplement my studies with Japanese games, manga, interacting with people who I buy and exchange goods with, also people I met from concerts, events like that. But the result might be different from people who are full-bred Japanese sc uh, school graduate with pristine Japanese. I was lucky enough to spend my first one and a half years in a dormitory with mostly Japanese students who most of them don't speak fluent English. So I learned I learned quite a bit, quite a lot though actually, of daily conversation stops by interacting with some of them. However, I lack in business Japanese and kanji. I start to get confused when people use super formal Japanese and they get confused why I can't understand such high level Japanese. I have problems handling with really high level ones and I ain't joking about that. Thank you for listening to this series. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Make sure to hit that notification button so you won't miss any updates. And I'll see you on the next video's last podcast. Bye-bye!